Uh, yeah, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank I'm playing is the Panzer Kampfwagen S35. This is a German Tier 3 uh, medium tank. It's also a premium tank, and it's based on a French medium tank called the S35. Uh, the map is Ruinberg. Now, uh, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm approaching the center of the map, uh, one of the spotting positions, and depending on which tank I play, I choose uh, one of two different spotting positions. And I do have Binox enabled, and using Binox, I'm going to be able to spot the majority of the uh, half of the map that I'm on, along with this central road over here. So you'll hear that one of my general strategies is always to play in the middle of the map. And the reason why is because not only can I spot all around here, but I can shoot at tanks all over the place, including down through this uh, central uh, column here. If I had been paying closer attention, I could have shot perhaps at these two tanks that crossed over. They're just, at the, they're just beyond my spotting range, which is perhaps why I didn't notice them. Uh, the other reason why I come to this location is I guard against any tanks that are coming uh, through this alleyway, such as this R-35. I shoot at tanks that cross over into the field over here on their way to the little town. And I uh, shoot at tanks that try to cross over that way. And any tanks that get behind us, I have shots on them also. Uh, you'll notice that I have my tank at a certain angle where the gun is pointing over the corner of the tank, which improves uh, the chance that there might be a ricochet if he fires back at me. Because this tank has side skirts on it, you can take a more aggressive angle. But in general, you don't want the gun to be over the exact corner. You want it to be more over uh, the inside track. Now, because I'm also... Uh, possibly being flanked by tanks over here, this is actually not a good angle because it's perpendicular to the tanks that are coming from that direction. So what I would do is I would just angle by pointing over the other corner of the track and what would happen is um, the, the back of the tank would be swinging back towards that corner which would give me a more favorable angle towards the tanks that are in this alley over here. So that was my first kill. You can see that I use the auto-aim. There's a lot of people that tell you never to use the auto-aim. Don't listen to them. It's just absolutely not true. Um, I use the auto-aim all the time. It's great for long-distance uh, battles. It's great for fast, uh, light tanks. Uh, it's very convenient. It allows you to uh, look at the battlefield while you're playing. You can, you, you, in fact, there was a, a map where you could drive while going through a winding road while someone's chasing you <laughs> with the auto-aim on him and fire backwards. I don't remember the name of the map. It was something like Severganosk or something like that. So let's continue. You'll notice that as soon as I grab him with the auto-aim, I zoom out. And the reason why is because I want to know what's going on. And I've had many games where I'm zoomed in and the tank comes right up next to me and starts blasting at me. You're very vulnerable when you're in the sniper mode. Unfortunately, he moved into a safe position. Target Target so you'll notice the same thing happened. I grabbed onto that tank with the auto-aim, and then I zoomed out so I can get a view of what's going on. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could monitor the mini-map to get an idea of what's going on. Now, the reason why you want to use the auto-aim is because if you're going to aim manually at this distant tank and you want to focus on the center, let's say I'm, I'm going like this and I say, okay, I'm going to go in sniper mode. So I'm in sniper mode, so i got to aim on that tank. When you go, I missed. S the auto-aim always grabs it right in the center. So all you got to do is get within the box and then you hit the auto-aim and it snaps to the center. And the reason why it's important is because at long ranges with a low tier, there's a great chance that you're going to miss that tank completely. So you want to be aimed at the center, and that's why you want to use the auto-aim. As soon as I knew that he was going to be destroyed, I looked for my next target, which is going to be this L60. You'll notice that I did not change the angle of my tank. This is 
one of the worst angles you can have. This is the second worst angle. The worst angle you can have is someone uh, shooting at the back of your tank. However, they are far enough away that they're probably not going to penetrate me. But I can't stay at this angle forever. If you don't have somebody to shoot at, and they're not coming to you, you have to go to them. Don't sit and wait. The more you sit and wait, the more they're going to hunt you down. You want to be the one that hunts them down. So you see I'm going into the sharpshooter mode while I'm driving. Saw a target. I grabbed onto him with the auto-aim, zoomed out immediately so I could pay attention to what's going on. I fired my shot and, and it did miss. There is a risk that you're going to miss because I didn't know he was going to move. If I had aimed manually, uh, there's also a great chance I would have missed because the, the tank moved uh, while I was firing, which I did not anticipate. The other thing is, even though there was a good chance I was going to miss that second shot, I take it anyway because it's not expensive. If it were a premium round or if I did not have a lot of rounds, uh, for example, with a tank like the Tehran, then I would not have taken that shot. But uh, otherwise, I take a lot of risky shots uh, just in case I get a hit. Now one thing you're going to notice, my first shot missed because it wasn't aimed in very well. As he moved across, my, my aim got better. Uh, it's a, a function of the game. So when I took the second shot, I was able to hit him. You'll also note that when you shoot, there's a little bit of an arc to your shots. That was a complete miss. Now in this case, I'm going to grab on. I'm going to grab onto that tank with the auto aim, and I'm going to drive around. And as soon as the reticule turns green, right now it's a red upside down triangle. As soon as it turns green, I'm going to fire at him. And the reason why I do it with the auto aim uh, is so that I'm going to shoot at him at the exact moment that I that the shot is lined up and ready to go. If I were playing a clan battle, I would shoot manually so that I can just shoot at the corner of his tank, but this is not a clan battle. The other reason why is because there's two tanks, and while I'm aiming at one with the gun on auto-aim, my mouse is going to track the second tank. So what's going to happen is I'm going to shoot at the tank destroyer, and then as, as soon as he dies, I want to have the mouse ready to click on the second tank. So you see right here I have the auto-aim on the first tank. But you want to grab that next tank as quickly as possible. You'll also notice that there's three tanks now that could potentially shoot at me, so I'm not in a good position. I have to move into a better position. And this is one of the reasons why the auto-aim is good. I wasn't even looking at the uh, enemy tank. I was looking at where I was going to reverse to, which allowed me to shoot at him while I was driving into a better position. Normally when a tank is driving past you, you want to turn your tank uh, to keep your gun uh, in track with him. But because I'm up against the wall, I did not do that. Now here I'm trying to uh, see if I could snipe on him manually just to get a better shot because it's too dangerous to run out with the auto aim so I'm looking for a manual shot where I can hit uh, whatever I can. That's four kills. Now in this situation nobody is spotted except for the tank that just appeared in the south, the tank destroyer. Uh, so what you don't want to do is sit here and, and do nothing. You want to make decisions very quickly. Got a tank running across, which I missed. But what I'm doing right now, you see that another tank shows up. Don't know what he's going to do. He might come out again, he might not. So he decided not to. And sitting here and waiting is the wrong thing. So you want to immediately decide where you're going to go. If you don't hunt them down, they're going to hunt you down. And as you can see, I'm going to push this vehicle to try and make a little barricade and hope that the enemy doesn't know what I'm doing. 
they know that I'm here. So if they come out and try and shoot me, I'll have some added protection. Uh, but they did not come out and shoot me. So that's five kills. Uh, because we're being capped, it's uh, very important to go back and reset cap immediately. It doesn't matter what stage of the game you're in. There's people that say no fast cap or don't worry about the cap. You need to take uh, action against the cap immediately. Don't let the cap timer run. It's very dangerous and lots of games have been lost because people just sat and let the enemy cap them. So don't let it happen. Tell your teammates to reset the cap immediately and if they don't do it then you have to do it. It's better to win the game than to lose because uh, people were being lazy. So he died. Looking for the next target. You gotta hustle in these games. So these are... So both of those kills were without using the auto-aim. That's seven kills I have. The next tank is an AT-1, which could potentially be better armored. And you'll notice that I'm telling my ally to wait for me, uh, but unfortunately he died. Uh, if, if you're in a situation um, where you only have a few allies left, you want to um, group together. Okay, now this is... What you want to do is you want to get together with your allies so you can surround the guy. One guy gets in front, one guy gets in back, and the guy in front distracts uh, the enemy and the guy in back goes and shoots at him. That's the proper way to play. I think this is where my lag kicked in and I was no longer able to control my tank. It's going to happen. Okay, so I got the kill. That's eight kills. It must be when I go for the I go uh, that uh, my game just disconnected or something. Something happened where I lost control of the tank. And I wasn't able to finish off an easy uh, tank. I think he might even kill me and I don't spot him or something like that. Now, we're in a situation where... I don't know why I decided to go this way, because the enemy is obviously was last spotted far away. But he knows where I am, so I think what I'm doing is I'm taking a wide arc so that he's assuming that I'm going to take the road close to the buildings, but I'm not going to go that way. Uh, from here you can get a view. If he crosses over into the field, I'm going to spot him. I probably will spot him before he spots me. Speed it up, perhaps. Let's see what happens. And you do want to be aware of the time. There's nine minutes left in the game, so I do have plenty of time to find out where he is. And you do have to come up with a plan. Okay, so he's capping my base. Which means if I had gone through the city, I probably would have ran into him. The other thing I could have done was sat with the binox on and further improved my range. Right now, you can see that there's a green circle, <coughs> excuse me, which is my spotting range. I can increase that by stopping and letting the binox come on. However, he might be hiding behind one of the buildings, and uh, there's only one minute left, and I do want to spot him. So what you can do is you can drive a little bit, stop, turn on the binox, drive a little bit, stop, turn on the binox. The other thing you can do is you have the throttle, there's three settings. Full speed, medium speed, and slow speed. You can put it on a slower speed. And then what you do is you approach the base slowly, and as soon as you spot him, you stop. And it increases the chance you'd have to either spot each other at the exact same time 
or if you spot him first and you stop because you were driving slowly and he doesn't spot you, then you know where he is and he doesn't know where you are. And you can come up with a sniping position to get an advantage on him. You can see that base timer is counting up pretty quickly, so it's important for me to get at that base as quickly as possible. When I uh, started approaching him capping, he's, is, it was at one minute and now it's down to 33 seconds. So that's why it's important to head right for that base. But I believe what happened is at this point, um, the lag kicked in and my tank just drove into the red line. You can see that he's capping and I don't see him there. I don't know why the replay ended. Okay, for some reason... Oh, you know what happened? The re, This is the point where the lag kicked in. And I got disconnected from the game or something. The replay ended. I never spotted him, even though he has to be right here. And he just killed me, and I never saw where he was. And my ally asked me, why didn't you kill him? And I said, never even saw him. And the game crashed and all that. So I really think that I would have gotten the ninth kill... Uh, this is one of the things that happens when you play the game. It's sad. Um, but uh, in terms of this tank, I think it's a wonderful tank. I enjoy playing it. It has good mobility. It has a fast-firing gun, which means that if the enemy has low health, you, you can rapidly go knock them out one at a time. The armor is okay. It's not that spectacular. The gun's not that spectacular. It's not like it's a... It's not the most amazing gun. In terms of medium tanks, it's probably an average medium tank. Uh, but I do enjoy playing it. Uh, it was a little bit difficult at first, but once I got used to it, I was happy that I did purchase it. Now the question is, should you buy this tank? The great news is that you can go on the French tech tree to tier 3 medium tanks, and you can play the non-premium version of this tank to get an idea of what it's like. And if you like playing it, you can buy the premium version, which is a low price. It's probably only around 4 or $5. Uh, this tank is the Panzer Kampfwagen S35. It's a German tier 3 medium tank based on a French um, uh, medium tank, also called the S35. Uh, you can see that I use my crew from my other German medium tanks. In this case, I have four or five crew skills for all of my crew members, which gives me a good advantage on the battlefield. I use BIA, which is very important with the lower tiers because it improves uh, your gun handling and, and spotting and a variety of other aspects of your tank. I use Six Sense, which is very valuable. Jack of all trades, which uh, helps your uh, tank perform better if you have injured crew members. I use Recon, which lets you uh, increase your spotting range. I think it's uh, 10%. I have uh, Smooth Ride, which improves your gun handling when your tank is moving. I have Concealment, which is very important because you don't want other tanks to see you. And it's very easy to spot other tanks on the battlefield because they don't use Concealment. Uh, so I try to use Concealment on all of my tanks because I'm always at the front lines and I'm always out in the open, so it's very important for me to have that. I also use off-road driving. Off-road driving makes this tank go faster on unpaved surfaces. Uh, so if you're climbing a hill or something like that, uh, you're going to go a little bit faster. You're going to be able to outrun uh, similarly equipped tanks that don't have off-road driving. Very important because driving is something you do all the time throughout the game. So it's important to always have uh, the best driving that you can have. Uh, my last crew member has Brothers in Arms uh, Concealment, which is also known as Camouflage. It has Situational Awareness, which allows me to see further and spot tanks further. It has Firefighting and it has Repairs. Between Firefighting and Repairs, for some tanks it's more important to have Firefighting, because some tanks catch on fire more often. And for many tanks, repairs are more important. If you have repairs for all your crew members, you might not need as much reliance on a repair kit because they repair your uh, tanks much faster. And in, there's been many times when I wish I had repairs on all of my crew. Uh, for firefighting, if you have at least one crew member with firefighting and you have full health and someone hits your uh, tank and sets it on fire, 
there's a good chance that you will survive with perhaps five or ten percent of your hit points left. So having at least one firefighter is a really, really good idea. I don't use fire extinguishers on any of my tanks except for my Chinese uh, top tier tanks because they catch on fire frequently, almost every game. I use vents because vents improve uh, a variety of aspects such as gun handling and spotting. I use the binocular telescope because with this tank you're going to get into a lot of games with uh, other tanks that are stronger than you, so, you ha so I play more of a passive spotting role. Uh, I also use coated optics so I can increase my view range. Because I play it alone uh, on the front lines, I need to be able to spot the enemy before they spot me. I use uh, half and half for AP and APCR and uh, a smaller portion for high explosives. Uh, you'll hear me say that I use a third and a third and a third AP, APCR, and AG, but not necessarily for the lower tier tanks, because with the lower tier tanks, I really don't use the high explosive rounds very much. Of course, that might change. I use uh, standard layout, small repair kit, large repair kit uh, for every tank, most importantly to repair your tracks, your ammo rack, your gun, your engine, etc. And in this case, I use the uh, large first aid kit. Uh, it's good because it protects your crew from getting injured. It it gives them a little bit of extra protection, and you don't have to use it. So you can use the same kit for every game and get that little bonus. Let's see if there's an option for fuel. If I had a lot of credits, I would use the 105 octane gasoline to get the extra speed. However, I really don't have uh, enough credits right now, so all of my tanks are e either using the cheaper gasoline or they're using the uh, first aid kit. And I do wait until they're on sale. For example, if you look at my small repair kit, you'll notice I have 715 in the depot because there was a sale recently and I bought as many as I could. So I try to buy everything at the half price sale uh, and it makes it a lot more cost effective when I play the game. Uh, there used to be ammo sales, but I haven't seen one in over two years. Okay, so that's the S35. Uh, this is a comparison of the Panzer S35 and the Somua S35, which is the French non-premium tier 3 medium tank. And you're going to notice that they're about the same. Obviously, there are going to be some differences. For example, the DPM on the S35 is higher, and the aiming time is better. German tanks uh, tend to have better aiming time than other nations. Uh, you're going to see that the turret armor is better for the German S-35, while the hull armor is better for the French S-35. Um, everything else is pretty much close. Uh, the radio range is better on the Samoa S-35, and this is with the maximum configuration. Uh, the way I configured it is with the coated optics, and they're, they're, ba they're both configured the same. Similar crew, similar equipment, etc. So basically I would say that they are about equal, but be aware that the Somua S35 has a lot of different gun options and turret options. So you might be able to get different types of guns if you like a different play style. It may have a derp gun option that's not available on the Panzer. So they are uh, very equivalent tanks. Now you might ask, how does the Panzer S35 premium tank compare to other tier 3 premium tanks? I would say it actually does very good. Uh, one of them is the M22 Locus. This is a tank if you like to spot. It's very fast. Uh, the spotting range is not that great, but it's very small, so you can go deep into enemy territory and, and run around and hide very well. This is a fun tank to play. Uh, the T15 is just kind of an average tank. There's really nothing special about it. The BT-7 Artillery is a very, very, very fun tank. This was a, a gift tank uh, perhaps two years ago. It's very fast. Um, it has, uh, it, you can use it with high explosive rounds, and it, it flies on the battlefield. It has great handling. M3 Light, I actually enjoy this tank, but you'll notice it, it's got the style of a lot of Tier 2 tanks. Uh, the Toldi, I do like playing this tank. This is, to me, uh, what an a early World War II tank is, or they call them a tankette. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Of all the Tier 2 and Tier 3s, 
this is one of my favorite of this style of tank. The LTP is, is very interesting. I believe this has a good frontal armor. I'm not really sure, but I think this will bounce a lot of rounds. And then you've got the, um, the 127, nothing special about that. So if you want a really fast tank, you're going to try the uh, BT-7. Uh, let's see what the speed is on that. It is 51. And then the Locust is 64. So the Locust is a really fast tank. If you want something where you can zip around and, and uh, scout out the enemy and do a lot of spotting, that's the tank to play. If you want to be able to do some scouting and shoot a couple of tanks, you're going to want a, a BT-7. Uh, if you want um, <laughs> a slower tank that has a fast firing gun and does well against its own tier, I would say get the S-35 uh, over the other tanks. So out of the um, tier 3 uh, premium tanks that I mentioned, I would say the ones that are worth buying, M-22, BT-7, the S-35, the Toldi, and maybe the M3 Lite. I wonder if this is an autoloader. No, it's not. Okay, so I don't recommend the M3 Lite. The M22, the BT7, uh, the S35, and the Toldi.